everybody, we are happy to present you our micro video lecture on lifelong learning in occasion of the International Education Day, which has been prepared in the frame of the Horizon 2020 initiative Kids for All. The concept of lifelong learning education itself is not a novelty at all if you consider that the idea of one continuous cognitive development of the individual over the life course has been present already since ancient Greek times. However, on a global level, the idea of long-term learning is being tackled for the first time in international debates in the 1960s, as stated in the Four report. It's only 30 years later that the term lifelong learning enters public documentation of the European Commission, back then on the presidency of Jacques Delors, that confirms its relevance for socio-economic development. This announcement ties into a post-1989 European scenario where diverse social-political developments set the milestones for dynamics of the contemporary intra-European mobility. Along with the people traveled their values, their traditions, their cultural dispositions and thus the total of their knowledge, experiences and competences in the newly created European space. Subsequently, the notion of the European Knowledge Society is introduced. Education is thus supposed to play an essential role for the societal and individual development from political, sociocultural and economic point of view. In 1996, the European Year of Lifelong Learning formally inserts the new educational paradigm into the European agenda and sets the groundstone for the strategy formulated by the Lisbon European Council in 2000 that aims to make the Union within 10 years the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based economy of the world, able to achieve sustainable economic growth with more and better places of work and greater social cohesion. This development provided the framework for further educational and linked mobility policies to facilitate the acquisition and transmission of competences. The lifelong learning construct provides for three dimensions. The lifelong perspective refers to the timely dimension of learning that is supposed to occur over the entire life course and thus challenges the collective imagination of a prescribed education period that is confined to school or university. Indeed, the complementary life-wide concept concerns the diverse context of learning and thus the process that occurs in multiple places and situations. Accordingly, learning can occur intentionally in formal situations and environments where processes are structured, learning objective defined and learning outcomes certified. Schools or universities would be good examples for formal learning institutions. On the other hand, non-formal learning does usually not lead necessarily to a certification, however, it is also structured in terms of learning objectives and resources, and most of the time intentional, and provided on institutional level, as for example in NGOs or associations for sport or leisure. However, life-wide education can also span up to the informal dimension, where learning results from daily activities related to work, family or leisure. Informal learning is not structured, occurs in most cases rather randomly and does typically not result in any certification. One example would be chatting at work with your colleagues, for instance. Finally, the Life Deep perspective guides the prior mentioned temporal and spatial dimensions towards a transversal, contextual level and refers to religious, moral, ethical and social values that guide the learner's cognitive and behavioral patterns. The European Commission defines knowledge, skills and attitudes as an intertwined threefold dimension of competences. This competence set allocates three different processes of competence generation to three distinctive qualities of the individual, changing its initial role from learner to trainee to become then ambassador and thus transmitter of the acquired competences. Whereas knowledge refers to facts, figures, concepts, ideas and theories which are already established and support the understanding of a certain area or subject, skills, on the other hand, are defined as the ability and capacity to carry out processes and to use the existing knowledge to achieve the results. Further, attitudes describe the disposition and mindsets to act or react to ideas, persons or situations. The recommendation for key competences for lifelong learning was firstly adopted by the European Parliament and the Council in 2006 and newly proposed in a revised edition in 2018. 
The recommendation aims to improve the development of key competences throughout life and to promote measures needed to achieve this objective. It thus encourages member states to make provisions for changing labour markets and active citizenship in more diverse, mobile, digital and global societies. Key competences have become a feature of education policy in European member states at different times and with different emphasis since the adoption for the of the first reference framework in 2006. The variety of approaches taken in the different member states reflects the history of those countries, the prevalent education philosophy and the educational structures that are already established. As a result, there is no uniform model followed for integrating the key competences into national curricula. Competencies work complementary. Literacy and numerical skills are presumed preparatory competences for multilingualism, which in turn facilitates cultural awareness and active citizenship, and may at a later stage lead to a potential entrepreneur skills. On the other hand, interpersonal skills and also digital competences are conditioning and driving the entire learning and integrational process and are thus both transversal for the acquisition, cultivation and transmission of all competences on the one hand and skill sets on their own on the other hand. So this was the theory, but how could effective competence formation and transmission in these key a areas be brought into action. For example, through peer learning that emphasizes additionally the significance of soft skills. This is the central point of the Kids for All project, which proposes a five-phase learning method for students in lower and upper secondary school age that envisages firstly a coupling of students to become learning bodies, secondly a theoretical knowledge acquisition through traditional learning methods followed by thirdly a skills training on how to transmit the learn to other learners in practical tutorials and last but by far not least a co-creational phase in which participants of the pilot project produce own learning contents to consolidate their knowledge and to transfer competences to their peers. The pedagogic concept of learning and applying the learned for its consolidation is not new. What is however rarely applied in practice is that students are concretely trained on how to switch roles in the educational scenario from learner to trainer, to convey concepts in their own language and codes to others and, most important, enriching the learning contents with own sociocultural experiences, which actually represents the real added value. Questioning the traditional role patterns of student and teacher stands thus in the center of this project that points to the full potential of the contemporary, highly diversified learning community. So who is on board for this adventure? The Kids for All partnership consists of partners and stakeholders from a total of 17 European and non-European countries that span over three continents. The composition of the partnership has envisaged a wide range of work teams from knowledge partners to society, social, educational and policy players to technical experts who are collaboratively working to put in place a nine-month pilot phase of the envisaged action in schools, associations and after-school programs of a total of eight countries and reaching more than 1,000 pilot participants. So this was our brief video lecture on lifelong learning. We hope you enjoyed it. Please visit our website or social media channels to find out more about the topic of lifelong learning and about our project. Thank you very much.